what's going on guys, Arax here, welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter, not actually Iceborne this time, Monster Hunter as a whole, because I want to talk about the future of the series, and I'm joined by uh, two Monster Hunter legends, no less, the uh, Master of Darkness himself, Chris from Team Darkseid. Hey, thanks for being here. And the uh, the friendliest angry man I've ever seen, Rage Gaming. <laughs> I still do. I still. I, I've said this before, but he, Look, he's, he's not right. an angry guy. It was guy. a mistake of my youth. <laughs> <laughs> he's not an angry guy, right? He's a great guy. Makes great videos, as do, as do both these guys. And and you know what? As like as as notable figures in the Monster Hunter community, I figured we can't. It would be remiss of me to talk about the future of Monster Hunter without getting you guys involved. Because I guess you guys kind of like Monster Hunter, right? A bit. I sometimes right. play it. Yeah, just a little bit. Occasionally. But exactly. yo, this is actually pretty interesting because, I mean, Iceborne already launched on PC, and so mm. that's the last big, big launch. Obviously, updates are coming out, but uh, they, they might release, they might announce something very soon, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what I'm hoping, because basically, like, the, the sort of reason behind this is because we're, we're kind of getting into an interesting period. Like, Capcom said officially that Iceborne is, like, the end of the world saga, so to speak, right? And we know that we're on the cusp of a new console generation, which is super exciting. PS5 this year, Xbox Series X this year. Um, and obviously with generations having launched as well like it's we're kind of in that weird long period where like all the platforms are, are Kind of owed something for the future, right? So I thought it'd be kind of too cool to like talk about that Talk about where we want to see the series go because it's kind of you know It's evolved heavily from the start. We look at like what world's done for it It's done some fantastic stuff, but I'm sure there's also some stuff that we would like to see done differently. So uh, mm. Let's let's start with that. But let's I want to before we start talking about specifics Let's talk about platforms because where do you where are you guys at like for me? I started on handheld, right? I started on PSP, and although I love everything that World and Iceborne has done for the series, I kind of do still miss playing Monster Hunter handheld. Yeah, there's a certain nostalgia to that. I mean, I started on PlayStation 2, so okay, it, yeah. going back to PS4 was like returning home to Monster Hunter for me. <laughs> yeah, same but, for me too, actually. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Un until World, my most hours were on PSP and, and Freedom Unite, so. Yeah. I oh, really? Like, okay. Mm. Yeah. I feel like that I'll kind be of very surprised well if they're not working on World 2 or Monster Hunter 6, whichever yeah. way they go. Monster Hunter 6, it just sounds so unreal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, need to, like, they need to name it something like something iconic, like. This is, this is, this is where I'm Monster on. Hunter Universe. Whoa. What? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> you know what we call it? Monsters <laughs> in space! <laughs> what, would you, what would you have of a space monster? Oh, no, actually, uh, oh, uh, well, Xeno Jiva. No, 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 a, a, a new space monster, not an existing space monster. Uh, how would you, how would you construct a space fight? Would it be like swimming underwater? Would it basically be like? Oh yeah, I guess if you want to actually have it literally in space. <laughs> monster hunters with jetpacks and spacesuits. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Imagine the hunter. Oh, that, that does make me wonder. How would like take the monster hunter world and then go like a few thousand years in the future? What would monster hunting look like? You basically have God Eater. They all yeah, actually, that's them, a really though. good point. Yeah, you exactly. basically would just end up with God maybe Eater, we, wouldn't you? We, maybe they all went extinct by that time, so then no, there's not any monsters wasteland. left. It's basically just a game where you float around in space and just collect herbs. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> it's a farming yeah. game. Love it, love it. That would be, that would, that would be crazy. But... On that, on that topic, you mentioned kind of universe, right? That actually kind of like spins quite nicely into, uh, into sort of like this next thing. So obviously, Iceborne and World introduced some kind of interesting sort of ch shifts to like how the online lobbies work. But would you ever like to see a future where, because I've seen like some games are kind of going that way anyway, where Monster Hunter adopts a slightly more traditional MMO format where like everything is online. You kind of go out into the world and you can see more people. Would you like that or would you like... Mm, we've seen I, it with Monster Hunter Online, right? Already. Yeah, in Frontier a little bit. Mm. And while, I mean, I played online uh, many years ago, like in 2015 or 16, uh, graphics-wise it looked amazing compared to what Monster Hunter was on the 3DS, obviously. But um, it did have, I mean, it does have its negative points as well, always mm. being online. Yeah. And having this kind of MMO kind of feel to it where you pay a lot for customizable options, whereas sure. in World you just have your 60 game, 60 bucks game and you get almost everything for free. Which I kind of prefer, honestly, but... I, I also think you lose a lot of what makes Monster special if you go the MMO route. Because mm. you have to make an end game with a gear treadmill and progression, and it's... Obviously we have that in Monster Hunter, but it's much more on your own terms. Whereas yeah. you have to balance everything in an MMO, you can't just let people do what they want. Oh, right, yeah. Monster Hunter Online that, had that level. was one thing in Frontier, the power creep was insanity in that game. 
Like, you started out with fairly normal monsters, and then you end up with things that blow up the entire screen every three <laughs> nanoseconds. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Frontier is an MMO too, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so oh, like, the I monsters see. ended up absolutely just bonkers because they had to keep up one-upping themselves because it's an MMO. What if you kept it in its kind of current traditional format, but then adopted a slight MMO feel to it, whereby, like, say, in, 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 in an effect of kind of like how sort of the guidelines works, but imagine if the guidelines are like a much more open, expansive thing, and hunters can kind of go out in, and maybe like a lobby could only hold like 16 players or 24 players, and you're in an instance doing your own thing hunting, but then so, suddenly you could be over in the corner doing a hunt, and then like 12 hunters could just run in and just help you. Like, what about what instead of it kind of being a traditional like end game focused MMO experience, it would be more like server okay. instance based. So I like, think that take... that's going to be cool. I mean, we've seen that as well, Rage, right? And online as well. 12 yeah. players, uh, Shen Gaoren. We've seen that. Um, and I think we have the 16 players in the hub. So why not make it for some quests, maybe for some big siege quests like Kulv or Lao Shan? You could open it up for 16 players, but then have traditional quests the way they are right it's now. It's maybe? supposed to be unlucky if you have more than 400, Chris. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Really? The, Who the said law. that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a law thing. Um, in Monster Hunter 1, the village chief went on a hunt with his wife and three other people so it was five of them and everyone but him died so since then hunters don't go in large okay, groups I, and four. Okay I'm pretty sure Capcom just made up that. Uh, that <laughs> yeah I know that's what they to, said to justify, to justify only four hunters they... but do you want everyone to die? Because that's how everyone dies. <laughs> yes. It's totally it's not about <laughs> us and the technical limitations it's about the lore guys. Exactly. Okay? <laughs> I mean the idea of say you've got you've got Astera and then all five of the maps are just connected as one map and then connected to Astera so there's no loading screens mm. just that'd be so people, insane and they're just like skyrim basically hunting. right so yeah that's something i've always i feel like that's something they probably want because they've said world is the closest they've got to what they actually yeah. originally wanted for monster it's Hunter. a huge step forward removing yeah. within the map removing the cut the loading screens mm. I, but I, I think i'll be surprised if we don't end up one day having a monster that yeah. is just one big map like colossally big map yeah and no. the idea of just hunting your uh, hunting what you're hunting and then someone else's hunt and fight comes crashing through yours is quite amusing. Yeah, Cause if we look, uh, yeah, the uh, the idea of like people would just be able to kind of pile in together and be like, "Yo, I'll help you out." Because that's one of the things that I've like, you know, putting sort of end game grind to one side. One of the things that I like about MMOs is just seeing stuff happening in the world that's not your stuff, and you're just like, "Eh, let me get involved." Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. I mean, if you look at the way Monster Hunter World already stepped up the game. Uh, Way back, like five years ago, it was unimaginable for me to to believe that the the loading screens between the single areas were gone. How is this game even supposed to work without <laughs> yeah, those? That's a good point. But they, they somehow made it actually honestly. work. They made it work so nicely. Um, and yo, if if they did that that nicely, I mean, why not go even further beyond, right? Yeah. So no, do you, do you think that it's a strict upgrade? World, or is there a place for uh, Monster Generations Ultimate 2 on the Switch and then World 2 I think, on I think there kind of has to be, right? Because I think when you look yeah, at the I way do. that the, um, the console generation is going, obviously, like, PS5 and Xbox Series X is going to push more power, right? And no one's going to want to have... There's not going to be a future... Unless they do, like, a Nintendo Switch Pro, there's not going to be a future where you could have a visually impressive game like it is on the next gen that is also par like parity on, on Switch. And But similarly, you wouldn't want to have, like, a downgraded version on Switch. So I, I almost feel like I want there to be that... Um, that sort of Zelda timeline style split where there's just like two distinctly different games because you know how like the portable team have often or like the ones that kind of did the spin-off stuff like Generations and Portable 3rd they've always kind of done been the ones to be like a little bit more out there with their ideas hence like Hunter Styles and stuff so yeah, I, yeah exactly right so I personally like a future where it's like you carry on on Switch and they've kind of got their outlandish ideas with you know slightly more vibrant colour palette and just over the top stuff and then you've kind of got the the world style, more kind of gritty, realistic future yeah. they're pushing. But ab about the B team, do we know, have they worked on Iceborne or was a Iceborne the, the work of Team A, like just they did World as well? Pretty sure Iceborne was Team uh, A as well. Yeah, I believe it's Team A. Oh, oh my God, so what has Team B done uh, well, since thing Generations is, I, I, Ultimate? I, I really have a gut feeling that we're not far away from a another Switch Monster Hunter announcement. I hope so, like, I that just... would be awesome. I, I feel like there is definitely a place for both because as much as they're both Monster Hunter games, it's a hugely different experience playing GU compared to World. Yeah. But uh, like at the same time, it's like so many mechanics are so old school and uh, they're, I love those mechanics, but especially for new players, there's a lot of quality of life uh, lacking. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm. So I, I can't really see it coexisting at, at the moment, honestly. I think if they did it, it would have to kind of like be a, you'd have to bridge the app. You'd, you'd almost have to sort of go down the switch route, but there's obviously some quality of life stuff that you'd have to bring over. Right? I feel like it would be a weird future if this, even if the Switch version came out, if you went back to a method where like the maps had loading screens, for example, or you didn't have certain certain things. So I almost feel like you could take the foundational quality of life updates of like World, put that in like the traditional monster hunting experience and then probably have something that is more user friendly, but also slightly, slightly less restrained. Yeah, that definitely works. I, I wonder if, if they would put World only monsters in a Switch game so that it gets huh. almost downgraded in how it works. That would be interesting. That would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, like seeing something like Basil, but in the old style. I, I can't imagine it going the other way around. Yeah, that's true. That that, that would be, yeah. That, imagine, imagine trying to like run away from like a like a Basil Geese and then like you're just like, no, wait, let me run through this loading area. I'm okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you I can't like get that's... me here, man. Yeah. That would be a classic anti Valstrax technique. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that'd be that'd be kind of cool. I'm definitely yeah, I'm definitely interested to see like 100. I think I think there's there there should be a future where both can both can exist and both can kind of offer different player experiences. But I definitely still want my my kind of portable monster hunter so I can kind of go keep on the go. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely fair. But what do you guys think about weapons? So so here's the thing, right? So it's been quite some time since we've like had any new weapons. Obviously, four introduced Charles Blade and Insect Glaive, and then you know now we're sort of like. I feel, I feel whatever they do next, it always has to bring in some kind of drastic new weapon archetype. Yeah, right? see, because obviously with World, they had to swap to the new engine and new way of doing things. Mm. So I feel like they were limited in just how much pure content they could pack. Whereas I feel like the sky's the limit for Monster Hunter World 2 or Monster Hunter 6. Yeah. I feel like they're going to... So you... Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see a whole new category of monster as well, but I assume we'll get to that. That'll, Either yeah, way. That'll, that'll, that'll be, yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. What would yeah. you, if you if you could pick one, what would you want your your weapon... If you could add, like, one weapon, weapon archetype, where's the glaring right. gap for you guys? Greater it... sword. <laughs> <laughs> the great sword is already perfect. Just make it... <laughs> no, for me, I've always said I... Okay, so I really love Insect Glaive, like, a mm. lot, but I really hate the Kinsex. Like a uh, lot. Yes. So for me, I'd love something essentially like hunting spear. Oh. That's the spear part, like jabby with reach and but like we have a mobility. Lance. But we have a without. lance. We have an insect glaive. And do you want another long? Well, the lance weapon. is really heavy and slow. The insect glaive uses the insect and the buff system and the flips. I want just a, a agile non-buff management weapon. Right. But isn't know, it has the reach to it? <laughs> have you oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. <laughs> I just. I you just. too, right, Josh? You've you've played it. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. That's actually a good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. no Spear would be cool. I, I was, I was a similar mindset to you when when Insect Glaive first came out because I've always liked maybe not the traditional spear, but more so like the um, you kind of sort of think about like the spears they use like in sort of Chinese martial art films. I think there's a, there's yeah. I can't remember the proper word for those, but that, like that in my mind, or either that or like a boast off. So I can I can see where you're going with that. Yeah. What about you, Chris? There's, a, there's also a mod now where you can replace the Kinsek with a monster. So you can have Yeah, there is. It's really funny. <laughs> what the hell? So you can have a big basil on your arm and you can just send him flying towards the other monster. Incredible. <laughs> Maybe that's something for you, Josh. Maybe this way you like the insect life. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that, that should do it. <laughs> but yeah, weapons, I mean, um, I see you covering a lot. Um, I, th I think you, you've you mentioned uh, Tonfas quite a bit, Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that would be pretty cool. I, I, I think it's not very similar to any of the other weapons. Obviously, it's maybe most similar to dual blades, mm. but uh, we've we've seen it already exists in the frontier. Uh, in frontier, now frontier has gone offline, so uh, maybe that would be a good uh, time to revive yeah, <laughs> this weapon and bring it to Definitely a space for dual blades, but blunt. Honestly, yeah. I don't think that's that bad of a. I think they should just be fists, though, like actual, just like forget Tom for Well, just as I was just gonna say, can we can we have a, the fifteenth weapon just be the admiral? He just, yes. <laughs> every yes. cutscene, he's so desperate to just punch things. He's amazing. He is. He's he is. I'll pick up the nearest rock. I guess. Yes. Oh, yeah. Imagine that. Like just a thing where like you have powerful gloves. It could be like the power gloves, the power gauntlets of Zelda. Yeah, right? you just rip stuff out the ground <laughs> yeah. and throw it at the monster. Like, I don't need barrel bombs. I just like here's this cliff. Let me just throw it at your face. That would be incredible. <laughs> Yeah, that would be something else. I think also something like some kind of chain-based weapon as well. Um, like, cause I what was was it was it Togedin or like another game? There's a there's one of those games where like you can almost like lock monsters down as well. Like in sort of like not in like a pitfall trap, but like, like you can kind of attach chains to them and sort of like restrain them. So something like that could be kind of cool because that would work quite yeah. well in sort of team-based combat. Uh, like I like, like, like nunchucks or something like that. 
with a chain more so like a long long chain so sort of I'm, I'm thinking ah. more like kind of like a whip chain kind of thing and then you could potentially have a mechanic where like you could lock it around monsters and like restrain them and hold them potentially in which game does it exist again something like that i thought um, i thought it was talking then but i could be mistaken I'm, I'm pretty sure there is a game that lets you do wait, that wasn't it also dauntless it was also dauntless pretty sure there was chain blades in dauntless yeah, yeah. chain blades yeah but you can't restrain monsters in that one though i'm thinking there's no, actually yeah. or maybe you're thinking of astral chain either way yeah that might be it. probably that oh yeah Give us astral check. Yeah, yeah, that 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 will work. But yeah, so it's a we weapons. One hundred percent needs to like, you know, I guess I think it would. I think it would be. Yeah, it would be weird of them to kind of like do another game without like a big change mm -hmm. to the foundation. I do think we need another ranged weapon as well. Yeah, true. Like a cannon. As much as I like the bow guns, the light and heavy bow gun divide isn't the craziest thing in the world. Though at least in world, it's they're very different from each other. Mm, true. 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 But what about monsters? Like, so here's the thing. Like, so, so obviously, and again, it's it's kind of it's it's obviously in uh in world with the introduction of like the you know the new engine and stuff. They obviously weren't going to bring over everything, but there's a lot of like archetypes, like, not archetypes. There's a lot of kind of different like species that we haven't had in uh that were present in like the handheld ones. So like, where where like what kind of main species would you like to sort of see? Yeah, for return? me, that's the by far the biggest disappointment in world. Just the yeah. lack of pure variety. Like, I just I. The idea of seeing the insect monsters in world's graphics mm. is, I like, it's mm. like looking up in the rotten veil and seeing an Astilla crawling along the ceiling. Like, yeah. Jesus. I, I just, yeah. I, I want the insects back more than anything. They're not my favorite, not close really, but just from how purely unique they are compared to everything else and seeing their limbs clattering along and because mm. they just move unlike anything. Or seeing a Celtus transform and combine in the ancient forest would be absolutely incredible and we just kind of Ves vespoid queen as well yeah be actually queen. oh yeah let's get yeah vespoid queen in here best insect monster <laughs> <laughs> i mean vespoid but more larger. monsters <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah well, dude it's easy to implement i guess compared to i guess it's already <laughs> horrible isn't it just, like so, someone drag a vespoid a bit a bit bigger by the top right nodule <laughs> maybe there's even a mod for it so we get it anyway yeah that's a good point True. But I, for me, it's like, I know a lot of people hate underwater, but I think if they can fix some of the weapons or like improve some of the weapons that were not that great underwater, because I think in some weapons like Lance, Lance or a Longsword, I really enjoyed those weapons to play them underwater in third gen. And while obviously if we had to choose between underwater and uh, normal fights, I would always prefer the normal fights that we have in world, but it also is it added more variety in my opinion, and yeah, it was I, really I, refreshing to be underwater as well. It hey, just was more immersive. I definitely think there's a place for underwater. I, I I think they jumped the gun with it. I think they tried to do it when they couldn't quite make it work right with what they had at their disposal. But with with World's Engine and how everything works, maybe if you don't specifically fight but just being able to go underwater even if it's just to travel or run from a monster like the idea of fighting namiel underwater and he does the thing in the cutscene where he makes everything go dark so you're underwater and the screen's just pitch black except for his luminescent lights that you see swimming around i mean that would just be mm, terrifying yeah and it's I just really so, such a different experience to fight yeah, this it monster it's, it's 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 so it's like a hybrid it's so nice yeah and uh, so hell, even even the idea of uh, having a wing drake on your back and taking it to the sky as well would be quite fun. I agree. There's Are definitely we... a place for underwater in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> you really did like it. No, I. I you know what? It's, you know, it's, it's just it, my my experience, right? With any, I, I I haven't played any video game in my entire gaming career where being underwater has been a pleasant experience. I think about like the times you have to swim underwater in like Tomb Raider games or like. Swimming underwater like Alex in Miracle World or Mario. It's always just a frustrating experience. <laughs> Have you tried underwater in Grand Theft Auto V when it came out? Uh, I, think, I think that was done amazingly nice. I think the like, fact that I don't remember it probably implies that I still didn't like it. <laughs> Because I remember like going uh, around the underwater areas with the subway and trying to collect all the collectibles there. Oh. With the with the submarine, I mean, not the subway. I'm sorry, submarine. <laughs> I mean, I mean, but whatever. Bandicoot maybe it was just me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but to be, to be fair, I mean, like, I agree that if if they kind of if they if they bring it back and implement it in a good way, I mean, it was it was a cool thing. I'm not gonna lie, like, it might have been a little bit janky. There were definitely cool parts to it, and it did kind of give life to one of my favorite monsters, obviously being laggy. So, like, if they could do it really well. I'm cool with it, right? I'm just, well, I'm how, just. How do you how do you do justice to the the Leviathans without underwater combat? Because we want them, but at the same time, a landlocked yeah. Geocris is just sad. It's true. Yeah. Maybe the solution is space, like you said before. We'll put them in yeah, space just, instead. Yeah, just take it to space. <laughs> Zero gravity <laughs> monsters, and then Laggy can just be a, an, an ethereal space being. 
But I mean, no, I mean a Bissell of Geocris already does look like an, a, a space being, so I guess that works. There you go, look, see? Capcom, hire us, we sold it for you. <laughs> Monsters in space. <laughs> imagine us on the dev team. Like, yeah, this would be really cool, guys, come on. <laughs> Ima- Im- imagine us, everybody screaming weapon designs, weapon designs, and then we just make, like, uh, the Monster Hunter universe. <laughs> With slap on bone and, and, bone and iron designs. These guys are crazy, but people listen to these guys. Maybe they're onto something. Hunter can use another hunter as a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Fair enough. Well, yeah, so more monsters, more weapons, more stuff. To round it all out, is there any, like, one standout thing? It can be a mechanic, it can be a monster, it can be a weapon, it can be a thing that you uh, want to see in the future. I want the clutch claw to go away. You don't like it? Look, it's... <laughs> Being able to go on the monster at any point is fun. It is, because mounting is fun. But what I really don't like is... All right, every 90 seconds I have to maintain a tenderized buff, otherwise I'm being really inefficient. Yeah, I just hate that. Fair. It's That's just, I, I, and also the whole enraged thing, because as soon as the monster calms down, it's like, all right, nobody move. Nobody hit it. You don't want to enrage it. We need to get our flint shut off. Yeah. Okay? Okay. It just, it, it makes everything so phase-like. It, it's yeah, not I as free-flowing as a hunt normally should be. There's just things you have to do now because of the clutch clock. And I, I, I think it's got so much potential, but I want them to... I refine th- it a lot. I mean, I I think it's a nice little mechanic for a, a, a newcomer to the game to play around with a little bit. But as soon as you like play this game more, and especially in Endgame, it starts to become really repetitive because it's yeah. the same thing for every single monster every time. After like a certain t- amount of time, you just have to tenderize again, like Rachel already said. Yeah. It's like mm, it's it's a bit tedious. Yeah, yeah. it is. It, it also fair. gets really frustrating when it's not tenderized, but it's you you keep attaching and you keep getting knocked off, but you feel bad because it's not tenderized and it should be. And you just go for the cycle of not being able to get the bloody attack off, and it just ah. You you land your TCS and you're like, oh no, it wasn't tenderized. Yeah, <laughs> it's just I I think it has a lot of potential, but if they keep it, I really, I mean, for me, if it was you could only clutch claw when it goes into the clutch claw stance, I think that would already be a world better. Then it's an option yeah. for when that happens, but it's not something you can just spam mm. and then also don't you you know you feel bad if you're not doing it. Mm. Especially okay, well, for I ha- the light weapons. I-, I have an interesting one that I would like to see. So, you know, I w- would always... I'm always happy if the monster community expands and becomes bigger. Mm. And, look, honestly, if we take a look at the most successful games, like, I don't know, Fortnite, PUBG, League, Grand Theft Auto Five, or Dances. whatever it is, they all have one... I mean, yes. What, is that <laughs> what dancing? I, if, if it's Fortnite, it has to be dancing, right? That's, that's, it, we, we, but that's we have dancing, though. We, we have the gestures true. and the poses. No, I guess that is true, <laughs> yeah. But like, there's one thing that all those games have, at least in some way, which is PvP. And Monster Hunter never had any PvP, and I'm oh hoping God. maybe somehow this is possible, whether this is like a, another mode separate from the entire game, or even like a spin-off game. I don't know what they're doing, but maybe imagine you could play as a, as a Nergigante against four hunters online. Oh. Yeah, so like Evolve. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you have like a your pool of attacks that you can do, and essentially you spam the dive bomb all the time. <laughs> no, no, that's not, not what I mean, but like... I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's a it's a very wild yeah, I, I, I idea. I guess you but... could justify it with hunters training against each other. I I think it would kind of end up like Dark Souls PvP, where it's kind of a little bit unbalanced and broken and janky, but really really fun. Yeah, you could just go. It would be like, mode. hold on a minute, I'm charging up my true charge slash. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm please just run stand still. You and <laughs> <laughs> please stand <laughs> still for five minutes. I promise I'll hit you. And he's like, nope. and then a, a dual blade user comes behind you and pokes you in the back and knocks you off the ledge. Yeah. Like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Just a Lance player in Rocksteady just charging backwards and forwards <laughs> through the arena. <laughs> just running non-stop with like dash juice and just like, yep. Yeah, <laughs> diddly, diddly, diddly. yeah that would be the one. That would be amazing. But, but, uh, I mean, look I, at Riot Games. They they started with League and now they're kind of expanding in yeah, almost true. every single genre. They're doing a shooter. Oh. They're doing a card game. Yeah, that's a good point. I honestly would adore a, uh, a half stony type game, but Monster Hunter World. I think that would be so fun. Hmm. What about or a fighting a, game? Yeah, that would be really awesome as well. Like I, I, I just, I works. think there's so much potential for the monsters and, and yeah, how unique they all are to put them into other worlds. I think that'd be really, really cool. <laughs> Actually, if you could just decide on one spin-off that happens, what would it be? Hmm. Yeah, probably a card game. Because <laughs> for me, I, I think there's actually 
I, this is really out there, but I think there's a real, lot of potential for a almost monster and a horror game. Because the thing is, we're obviously hunters and we just destroy the monsters, but when you actually look at them, they're really terrifying creatures. And the idea of being just a normal person, like wandering through the forest, and, and even something as, as kind of non-threatening to us as an Anjanath crosses your path, like that's, well, I'm gonna die. So I, I just like the idea of a really claustrophobic, intense experience of I'm a normal person trying to get from, say, one side of the ancient forest to the other, avoiding things like Nagakugas, Anjanath, etc, etc. And it's almost like alien isolation vibe where you just can't let yourself be seen. I think that would be really, really cool. And cool. the true end boss is Kunuyaku. <laughs> yeah, you get scary. to the end and it's the just a Kunuyaku. No, the best spin-off would be like, it would be like a Stardew Valley farming game where you play the role of the guy that does your farm, <laughs> right? But then what you don't realize is that he has a hard time because occasionally whilst farming all of your goods, like a Nogiante will come and just stamp all over his crops and he has to do it all over again. So occasionally it's like, it's like angry Stardew. Angry Stardew! Yes. The crossover we did, that's Capcom announced the Stardew Valley crossover <laughs> place. But, <laughs> but it plays in the universe and you collect herbs. Uh, so we get back to the first topic, actually. Yes, yeah. exactly can we, right. can we give gifts to random NPCs around Astera and raise their heart level? Maybe, maybe. Oh my god. <laughs> the fuck, Rage? When you get to seven hearts with the commander, you... That's you what you go. like, huh, Rage? Okay, okay, I see you. Hey, look, <laughs> I love my farming games and I will take no shame in admitting that. Amazing. Fair. Oh my god, the handler. She loves well, me. Well, I think it's safe to say Nobody that likes the we handler. have collectively that... <laughs> uh, saved the future of Monster Hunter. If Capcom run out of ideas, you're quite welcome to use any of these for free. <laughs> yep, there you go. We uh, <laughs> sign our rights away. <laughs> there you go, right? Guys, I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, we've done it. Thank you to you guys for joining me. Of course, for any of you guys that are, I'm sure you guys are all subscribed, but anyway, I'll links to both these guys' channels are in the description box down below. Make, you, make sure you guys go check out the videos, watch them, sub, all that good stuff. Thank you for joining me. Uh, and I guess we'll catch you guys. Yeah, thanks for having me. In thanks the next one. as well. Yep, was cool. Bye bye. See ya. Bye. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click on the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. Also, don't forget you can check out 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch six days a week. You can find a link to the multi stream in the description box down below. Be sure to drop by and get involved. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.